Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our auto centers franchise mode So in last episode we had the complete offseason and we let go a couple of our key players from prior years So those being per Jansen who was our third or fourth line center He signed with the st. Louis Blues We also let go of our goaltender who was 88 overall But he wasn't playing the greatest in the playoffs and whatnot and that was Brandon Fowler He went on to sign with Detroit and then we also also let go of Peyton Osgood which was one of the toughest ones to let go because technically he could be still playing here but we just didn't have the roster space really so Peyton Osgood went on to sign with the New York Islanders so anyways we're up here at the start of the 2028-29 season one of the last seasons we're probably going to be doing on this GM mode because then I'm going to be like basically just doing a recap for the rest of it um, that's going to probably happen though around February, so we still got like a month to go. Anyways, um, so there is one roster move we are going to do before we get started with the simulation, is we're going to be calling up e Alex Eofalo, or Ian e is it Alex Eofalo? Yeah, I think it's Alex Eofalo, why did I almost say Ian e Eofalo? That sounds weird. Um, but anyways, we're going to call up Eofalo from the AHL just in case because we need a depth forward anyways because we don't have one at the moment and we are going to send down hmm yeah we're gonna send down Liam Ekholm because Liam Ekholm he's not really paying out he has the medium top four potential but he's 24 and he's still like a 78 it looks like um if he is better than that we might call him back up again but we're gonna send him down for now so there we go Let's just edit those lines quickly. But like I said, Eofall is not going to play, probably. He's just a depth guy in case. Because I'm pretty sure he's got really good face-off stats, and that's why I brought him in. So let's go best lines. Let's move Westcott back up to the top. And then we also want to put in... Who was the other guy? Oh, yeah. There's another young guy that is in the lineup uh, that's pretty decent. Let's get rid of Shvidki because he's not growing. And that is Eli Hines. He had two years in the AHL. He's one of our top six forward prospects. So we're going to give him a chance to play in the AHL this year. And yeah, I think that's good. Yep, we are good to go. So hopefully this season's a bigger success than the last few years. Because like literally we can't get past the second round it seems like. Um, I'm hoping that letting go of Fowler... And hopefully Kuleshov, who should get a jump in overall after the preseason. Hopefully he has a pretty good simulation as a starter. He's only been a backup so far, so this is a bit of a scary situation. Like, if he's bad, we might miss the playoffs. Um, and then it depends also how uh, Nordstrom, the youngster, plays his backup in his first season. So let's get the preseason done with. Uh, and then we could see if we know any overalls yet. If not, we'll go 10 games and then check to make sure we got a good roster going. And then we'll, yeah, basically sim from there. So, pretty good. So, if 0-1s. Playing good against uh, people in the preseason, though, because, like, all teams have, like, their youngsters playing. And we have pretty much, like, a bunch of, like... Well, some of them are, like, really good veterans. Most of them actually now. Like, I think most of them at least have a couple, three, like, three seasons under their belt at least. And last game in the preseason. So we go 5-1-1 one, and one in the preseason. That's pretty good. Let's just see if we know any overalls yet. Wow, Ivan pushed care of nine points in seven games. Liking that second line, I guess. So, no, we do not know anybody's overall yet, except for Loktyanov dropped to an 89 for some reason, which is kind of weird. He's on the last year of his contract as well, so I might offer him an extension soon, because, yeah, obviously being the great player that he is, like, look at the last three seasons for him. Just insane records. So, um, yeah, I might offer him actually a contract extension really soon. But other than that, we don't really know about anybody else's overall, except for Conley went up to an 83. And he's listed as a second liner. Jeez. How am I supposed to play him as a second liner? Yeah, we might have some problems with that. Um, he's not even on the power play. And Kavanov is looking like an 85. Which makes sense. Because Kavanov had a good season last year. Where the heck am I going to slot some of these guys in? 
Yeah, this is going to be a really tough uh, way to give people ice time because some of the players, like, I shouldn't have really signed Kivanov, maybe. I should have signed maybe a third liner more. Yeah, he's like a second liner, pretty much. So, yeah, let's sum up to the first 10 games of the season, actually. So, that is 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, let's do those 10 games. And then let's check our overalls and all that stuff and then we will maybe make some adjustments to the lines accordingly because we want to make sure everybody has good enough ice time and whatnot because like I don't want like Joshua Connolly's morale to go down because he's only like 21 and he's like a top six forward potential player like he's probably going to end up playing like a Peyton Osgood type of idea and stuff for maybe more offensively minded so we get a win in our debut against the Bruins and we beat the Islanders nice like in the start to this guys just keep it up and we beat Arizona in overtime so we're 3 and 0 game against the Washington Capitals is a 6 to 3 loss so that was not a really good defensive game i would assume Nordstrom was in that that game too just cuz the other games look a lot better defensively so i feel like Nordstrom isn't that good of a goalie maybe he's like an 80 Game against Columbus is a 6-5 loss, and then there's a loss to Montreal. So after winning three in a row, we drop three in a row, so that's not good. We beat Pittsburgh. Can we beat Philadelphia? Yes, we can. A lot of road games, actually, this month. Yeah, most of the games this month are away, I think, or maybe they're both half-half. And then we lose to the Rangers, so we're 5-4. and four. Can we get a win against Dallas in the uh, first of two meetings? Wow, 8-7 to seven shootout loss. That is a horrible defensive game, and we only get a point out of it. Okay, so let's take a look at our lines and make sure they're all good. Push Karev's got 11 points already. Damn. He must be higher in overall. Uh, so Pro Horkin is not actually a second liner, which is a good thing in a way, I think. Yeah, Connolly can take face off, so we're going to move Connolly actually up to the second line and center because oh he's learning this is a third liner now his role I guess wasn't accurate um Voinov is actually an 85 now so that's actually really good um Logtyanov why is he dropping to a second line forward that's weird huh he'll probably grow back up eventually but yeah our roster actually looks pretty solid on offense defensively LaRose is still a 79 I was hoping he would get a growth of that. Yeah, our defense looks a little weak. It's not good. Goaltending wise, Kuleshov's in 87. Wow. In an elite goalie, that's awesome. Is he on the last year of his contract too? Yes, he is. Nordstrom's a 79. Hmm. I kind of don't like our defense at all. But whatever. I think we're just going to leave it like that, anyways. Because maybe our offense will save us and get us farther. Um, okay, and one thing I am going to do is I'm going to send Loktyanov to a contract extension. Even though I don't think he wants one. RFAs, well actually not RFAs. Uh, he's a UFA this year, what does he want? Uh, that's actually not a bad contract extension. I could go to... Hmm. Yeah, I'll do five years at... 7.6 yeah I'll do that 5 years that takes him until he's 30 and then we just need to locking up uh, Baumgartner whose contract I think ends next year because well Baumgartner actually might be a wild card kind of guy he might be one of those guys that eventually leave the team because if Voinov grows good enough Voinov could take over that line and then it could be just Voinov, Loktyanov and Pekanov and we get rid of Baumgartner so Loktyanov rejected it. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we'll just leave that for now. The contract extension is not that important at the moment. But I'm hoping we have a good enough season that it makes Loktyanov want to come back. Because Loktyanov is just like, he's basically like the uh, the passer of that line. Like I think Baumgartner is as well. But So Ola Hornquist has been injured, so we're going to go replace player. So that draws in Alex Eofalo against his former team and we lose that game. Yeah, we're not playing the greatest. I think it's probably the defensive core. So our second for Jet Wu, a fifth and a sixth. That would have helped our defensively, our, ourselves out defensively, but I'm not giving up a second. 
Considering we could be technically in rebuild state, I don't know. Boudreaux will go replace. That's the AHL. I don't really care about Boudreaux anyways, because I think he's like a top nine prospect. Ooh, Eofall is looking pretty bad for depth guy. It's probably because of his age. As long as he's playing solid defensively, I'm okay with it. Yeah, this is kind of like a 50-50 season. We go on losing streaks, and then we go on winning streaks. and Yeah, it's kind of an all over the place at the moment. Hopefully, there's like a month where we're just really dominant, and then we could get some more wins out of that. Um, so we're 8-7-2 and two game against Toronto, and we beat them. Nice, we're 2-0 and oh against Toronto this month. And now we're on a point streak, actually, for the last five games. Considering there was a shootout loss in between there. And now we lose to the Devils in regulation. So there's a loss. But we meet Minnesota. So we're 11-8-2. Nice. We're actually playing pretty good now. Okay, now as I say, yeah, there's another loss. Come on, guys. Let's put on some ground between us and those losses. There's another loss. So actually, we're not playing good. So at December the 1st, we are 11-10-2. Who is leading us in points now? Push care of still 20 points in 23 games. Damn. I wasn't expecting him to come out like that. Um, let's quickly save this. There you go. And now let's continue the simulation. I'm going to try to get most of this uh, season done with. Like, I don't really... Like, I, I want your guys' opinions on trades and stuff like that if I ever do trades. But the thing is, like, at the same time, I want to kind of get a lot of this simulation done with. Because, like, once, um, like I said, once uh, February 1st comes, I might be starting up a new GM mode series. You guys can actually go vote on a poll for which team we do. And it's in our throwback GM mode with our 98-99 rosters. So uh, there will be a link in the description for that if you guys want to go vote. Um, but we are not playing good recently. Five-game losing streak. Come on, guys. There you go. Beating Nashville. Yeah, this is a weird season. It's not like a blowout season like I think it was last year that we had the really good season. Yeah, I believe it was last year we had the really good season. This year is kind of just all over the place. Hopefully we're one of those teams that somehow squeak in with a wild card spot. Like, I want to make the conference finals this year. Like, because we... Like, Getting past the second round has been, like, a real problem for us. Like, we've came so close, like, multiple times. So, we're on a two-game winning streak. Ronnie Adams is back. I'll put him in, even though he's a top-nine prospect. Because he's actually pretty decent. Like, he's, like, 77 overall. Oh, not Schvidke. God damn it. I think he's a center or a right winger. Oh, he is a right winger. Okay. Um, but it did actually say that Junior Fugafuji is ready for the fourth line, so he could come up if we need him. Mary Mazzetti Mez almost is. Westcott almost is as well. Um, defensively, Ekholm, yeah, he's not that good yet. Same with Artugan. Huh. Okay, let's go back to the NHL. Keep on simulating. Come on, boys. Let's get a lot of wins together. Like, if we could get on, like, a six-game win streak or something, separate us from those losses, then that shouldn't be that bad. We're still on a point streak, though, because we got two points out of the shootout losses. So, at least we're still getting points in the extra frame. There's another two points against Montreal. And Troy McPherson has been injured till January the 3rd. Okay, that's not too long. Uh, Jet Wu again. No, thank you. Uh, last two games of the month against Tampa Bay and Washington. McPherson will be back on the third, so he might be back for... Well, I don't think the Montreal game. For the Islanders game, for sure. And there's a win and a loss. And we are 16-14-7. Kind of a weird record. Where are we in the standings, even? Uh, we're not too far back of that last playoff spot, I think. Um, and currently, Push Care of still leading the team with 36 points in 37 games. I don't know why the top line isn't up there in points yet. Considering, like, the last few seasons, those guys, like, have been point per game. They're probably up there, I would assume, close to that. But I'm surprised that Push Care of is leading the team. 
so let's go another yeah let's go all the way up to february the first mcpherson will be back in yeah shortly there's another win against montreal good job so we're getting some w's which is definitely going to help us with the standings so let's see um bergman was the depth guy that glitch though with Julius Bergman is kind of annoying. I don't know if you guys have realized in franchise mode, but he's signed to like a 10-year deal at like $725,000. It's like really annoying because he stays with the team the entire time. Um, against the Islanders is a 5-1 to win. Yeah, our record is looking kind of iffy because of the amount of like losses toll. Like even though they're extra frame losses, there's still a lot of losses. Like, we're getting points with those OT losses and whatnot, but we need, like, two points in games. Like, 18, 16, and 9. Like, <laughs> that's almost 10 extra frame losses. Like, if we manage to make the playoffs, it'll be just barely, I think. Or we'll be lucky. Else we could get a lot of wins in a month. There's a 9-1 to slaughter of the Coyotes. Jeez. Yeah, some of our games were really good offensively, and some of them were, like, really horrible defensively. So I'm not understanding how this team's working yet. It's probably because we have a really bad defensive core, but we also have a really strong offensive core. So some games were really bad defensively, and then some games were not. Mezzi will go replace player. Two-game losing streak. We're 20-18-10. and 10. Like, we're not separating our amount of losses at all. Like, total, we have, like, 28 losses in this season so far, but we've got points in 30 of 48 games. Okay, let's see the standings again before we go all the way up to the deadline. Wow, Bush care is still playing really good. Um, Let's see, last playoff spot has 61 there, 56. So we want to get that third spot in our division. So we're only 4, or not 4.6 points back of the Florida Panthers with two games in hand or will they have two games more played than us so we could still technically catch them we just want to beat divisional opponents especially if we want to get into these playoffs because i don't think we're going to be able to catch that uh, other wild card spot unless we go on a big tear soon there's a loss to chicago come on guys there's a win against san jose okay now let's start this big winning streak. Can we go on like a five game win streak at least, please? No, we can't. <laughs> yeah, this team is... Yeah, I'm not sure on exactly what I'm expecting of this team. Like, I feel like um, Loktyanov is not going to want to re-sign here at all. Like, technically, we could always put Bukhanov as a center next season if we need to. And put, like, uh, Voinov on the top line as well. But I don't know if that's going to really work out. And I really like Loktyanov. Uh, Burgundy. Thank you. I wouldn't mind trading one of our defensemen on our defensive core. But at the same time, I don't really want to change anything. And besides, the episodes get way too long when I make trades and whatnot. I prefer to do those in like the off season. But we are on a winning streak, actually. Four games in a row. Come on, guys, let's keep it up. Especially against these two divisional opponents. Can we beat Tampa Bay? Uh, yes, we can. Five-game winning streak. Can we beat Florida, who we are chasing, I think, still? And we lose to them. Uh, our Tukin's been injured in the AHL. Come on, boys, let's get three more wins, at least before this deadline. Because I want to get to the playoffs this year. Even if it's just barely, I want to make the playoffs. We beat the Devils, so we're still getting wins at least. Only one game without points in the last little while, so we might be catching up. Game against Vancouver. We beat them in a shootout. Good stuff. Uh, let's just go best lines down there in the AHL. Why not? Game against Nashville, and we beat them as well. Wow, okay. So a pretty good month to say the least. We got a lot of wins near the end of it. And Baumgartner is now leading the team in points with 57 and 61. So that top line must be clicking. Let's save this again. And then we'll check the standings quickly. And then I think we're going to continue our simulation probably. 
Um, let's see, where is it? So, currently the last wildcard spot has 72 points, so we're not far of that, actually. Four points behind it. Um, and our last playoff spot in our division has 71, which is three points above us. So, we're right in the mix for the playoffs. If we could go on some big winning streaks and knock off, like, Eastern Conference teams, that would be huge. So, yeah, I'm going to go past this deadline. Let's go to here to second quickly. See if we can get some wins against some Western Conference opponents. We lose to Edmonton, but we beat San Jose in a shootout. Okay, so we got a string of uh, Eastern Conference games all the way up to the Jets. So let's see if we can get some wins up to there. Game against the Devils. Come on, boys. Let's get two points. I don't want extra frame losses like we had a lot of. And that is not good. Voinov has been injured with a sore foot. So, yeah, let's just go replace the player. But that sucks because... Voinov's obviously on our second line. There's a win against Toronto, but three other losses. I'm not liking that. Okay, guys, so let's go another all the way up to this Flames game. We need to beat Montreal for sure. I don't know where Montreal is in the standings. And we beat Montreal, okay. But we still have a lot of losses. I'm not liking that. Like, I feel like we're going to miss out just barely. So, where are you? Voinov back into them. I feel like Voinov's like the next um, Loktyanov, because Loktyanov, I think as well, was a low elite that grew to a medium elite. Like, I feel like Voinov could be that type of guy as well. So, okay, we got some more points out of that. Let's check the standings again quickly while we're getting down to the wire. 77 points last playoff spot has 81 is it for us yeah last playoff spot has 81 points so we're still four points back so we got to get some w's guys we got to get some w's so especially this these two games against detroit those are both really critical games because i think they're the one with the last playoff spot currently so game against calgary come on yes there you go two points another two points please yes there you go how about Edmonton? Yes, there's three or four straight wins, actually. We're playing really good right now. But Detroit's also winning games, which is not what we want. And we lose to them in our first of two meetings, which is not good either. Yeah, we're still... Oh, it's Tampa Bay in the playoffs now, currently. In that last one, 87 points. But the last wildcard spot's actually at 86. So we're not far back of that wildcard spot still. So we want to beat... Uh, any team in the East right now. That's all we want. Basically what I've been saying this entire episode. So there you go. Let's go two games at a time. Come on, guys. Get points, please. Can we beat Buffalo? No, we can't. And we lose to Tampa Bay. So those two losses actually might knock us out of contention, I think. If we don't get any more points now. And can we beat Toronto? Yes, we do. We might actually miss the playoffs, which would really suck. And, yeah, we're probably going to miss it now because Kuleshov has been injured. So, let's go best roster. That really sucks. There's another win, actually. Dude, where are we in the standings again? 87 points. Last wildcard spot's 92 points. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make it. Oh, this really sucks. Like, it's a good year for our youngsters to kind of find their footing like Voinov, but still, there's a loss. Yeah, that probably doesn't. I think we're going to lose, and we're not going to make the playoffs for the first time in quite a few years. So this is another disappointing season. This team is really difficult to win with, I'm not going to lie. There's two wins to end the season, and we don't have a really good season record. 40, 31, and 11. And yeah, we missed out by only two points, I think. Yeah, we only missed out by two points, which is a good thing, but our division was really strong, like in terms of depth-wise. So let's save, and we're going to check the standing stuff, and then we're also going to check our player stats, and then that will be it, I think, for this episode. I'm not going to simulate to the draft yet, because I'd still like to offer at least Loktion of an extension, but I don't know if he's going to want to come back after a season like that. Okay, so let's sort by each position first. So let's go centers. So Loktyanov, 65 points this year. He was a plus 19, which is really good, but a really bad season in comparison to his last few years. Like, 
He had 84 points the last two seasons, 87 points the year before, only 65 this year, but whatever, I still really like his play. Uh, Kavanov, 55 points. That was, guy was a good pickup. He was just really bad defensively. Uh, Pro Horkin, 42 points. Pretty good season for him. Beauvillier, 32 points on the fourth line. That's pretty crazy. And then Iofalo had two assists in eight games. Left wingers, push care of 68 points. And then Voinov, 66 points in his second season in the NHL. Really good season for him, 37 goals. Yeah, this guy's definitely going to probably turn out to be a meme elite because looking at him now, 86 overall. Conley, 37 points. Lou Joseph, 31 points in his rookie season. And Hornquist, 15 points in his rookie season. Right wing wise, Pekanov, 73 points, so he continues to play really good. 41 goals, 32 assists. And then Baumgartner, 13 goals, 54 assists for 67 points. And Paul Bowl, 43 points on the third line. Defensively, McCutcheon, 22 points. Vishnevsky, 21 points. I think it's because we we're missing an offensive defenseman that we didn't do very good. But Vishnevsky and Dobson were really good plus minus players. Surprisingly. Uh, LaRose, 16 points. McPherson, 12 points. Renewn, in 11 points. And Bergman, no points. Goalie wise, Kulisov went 33, 23, and 10 with three shutouts, a 9 13 save percentage, and a 2.62 goals against average. While Nordstrom grew a bit, actually, he went 8 10 and 1 with a 903 save percentage and a 2.94 goals against average. Well, 2.93. Um, let's just check the entire league for goals. I want to see where Pakanov stacked up. I know he probably didn't win it because he only had 41 goals. Let's see. Goals. Yeah, Ramsey's going to win that. Richard with 50 goals. Hmm. But Pukanov was close to winning another one. Um, okay, so let's just check the standing stuff quickly. And then we're also going to look at the progress reports. And then that will be it for this episode. Because this episode's almost at 30 minutes, I think. Um, so let's take a look. Goals four per game on average. We were actually one of the best offensive-based teams. Surprisingly, 3.10 goals against our goals for per game. Our goals against, though, I think was probably a high up. Uh, maybe not, actually. It wasn't that bad. Maybe like, uh, maybe it was. It was like probably like 18th or something, 2.77. Our power play percentage wasn't that great either, 19 something percent. Our penalty kill, our penalty kill must have been bad. Uh, it looks like it's around the middle as well. Yeah, it's looking like around the middle at 79.5%. We are 21, 17, and 3 on home ice, and 19, 14, and 8 on the road. Okay, quickly, let's check the progress reports. So, yeah, next episode is just going to be the off season. At least we have a chance for a lottery pick because we probably need somebody else, like some other good top 10 pick, if we could get one. So, let's check modified. Hmm. Okay, so for growth-wise, Hornquist, the other ones are statistical growth, I think. Um, you follows dropping off, which I'm not, wasn't expecting. Well, I was expecting, but in the system, okay, so Lees is growing. Arneson, who we drafted last year, he's growing. It's good. Um, let's check by current overall. Fugu Fuji might, yeah, Fugu Fuji will be in the NHL next year. I think. Um, anybody else ready for the NHL next season? Westcott probably as well. That's cool. And how about goalie wise? How did Leonard Pan grow? Because that's another meme elite guy. Yeah, this guy's not gonna pan out. We get might as well trade this guy. Sixty four at twenty two. That's not that good. Okay, well, anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of our Sins franchise mode. So in next episode, we are going to go to the draft again. And we're going to probably have to start a bit of a rebuild again cause, or a retool. Because this team just doesn't seem to be able to get it done with. And here also, guys, is the top 10 picks of the draft. If you guys want to let me know who I should pick up. 
I don't know where we're going to be drafting, but hopefully we get a chance at this Wolski guy or Varakis or something like that to help us out. So anyways, guys, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.